reading from verse 1. And then I saw in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne a scroll written within and on the back. In other words, there was a book in the hands of the mighty God. The book was written inside and outside, sealed with seven seals. In other words, it's closed. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals. And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or book or to look into it. And I began to weep loudly because no one was found worthy, not able, remember, no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. And one of the elders said to me, weep no more. Behold, the line of tribe of Judah, the root of David has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Verse 12 onwards, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under this earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. Hallelujah. This is the Lamb of God who is worthy of the worship of angels. This is the Lamb of God who is worthy of the worship of saints. And this is the Lamb of God who is worthy of the worship of any living creature on the face of the earth. The Bible says every living creature is worshipping this Lamb. Lamb is worthy. He's not saying Lamb is able, but he's saying Lamb is worthy. You know, worthy means it took some moral fitness. He had to be morally upright. He had to be just, righteous, completely righteous in order to be able to open this book. What was there in this book? What was there in that book? What is all about in this book? The book, if you read from chapter 6 onwards, you find that every time a seal is being broken, something happens on the face of the earth. Every time there is a seal broken, a horse has been released, which means a great revival. A white horse is coming, conquering and conquering. So it is, it is, it is a great horse, which means a white horse, which means revival among the nations, revival among the people. The kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And who is unleashing it? Who is releasing it? The Lamb of God. And that's why he's worthy of worship because alone, Jesus alone can release the worship and Jesus alone can bring revival. Let me tell you, none of my efforts would re bring revival. Nobody can change somebody's heart. I cannot change my wife's heart. I tried. <laughs> Later on, I realized, oh, that's me. Okay, I need to change. Nobody can change. Believe me, you cannot change your son's heart or your daughter's heart. You must have tried so many times. But let me tell you, it is the son of God alone. Worthy is the lamb who's able to open the soul. He's, he's worthy to open. He is morally fit. He was tried and tested. He was tempted like any one of us. But Bible says he remained pure. Hallelujah. Many of us have been tested and found unworthy. Let me tell you, friend. Bible says there's no one righteous, not even one. Moses was a great leader. He led the people of God for 38 years. But after 38 years of leadership and 78 years of walking with God, one day God said to him, talk to the rock. And he goes and hits the rock. He disobeys God. Let me tell you, you may be in the leadership, but let me tell you, you're not worthy to open the book. You're not worthy to release any good thing. Only Christ is worthy to release blessings upon God's people. Only Christ is worthy. He alone can unleash the plan of God and not only the revival. You know what happened in the sixth chapter? Later on, there are different horses coming out. What, are, what were those horses? Some of those horses were kind of inflation. The prices of everything would go high. The value of money would be low. And who's not seeing that? Everyone is. You know this is what is going on all around the world. The prices of everything is going high. The inflation rate. Not only that, there were sicknesses and diseases like no one had ever experienced in, in, in the past life in, 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 the life, in the years gone by. So who is unleashing it? Who is unleashing it? The Lamb of God. He is, every time he's opening the seal, something is happening. Let me tell you, whether sorrow or joy, 
whether greatness or problem, whether calamity or greatness, whether revival or no revival, the Lamb of God is powerful enough to unleash the plan of God. Let me tell you, none of the calamity destroyed the church of Jesus Christ. Every calamity strengthened the church of Jesus Christ. And only Jesus can release. And which church is he talking to? He's talking to a persecuted church. You know in Revelation, the church was persecuted. The church was going through different times and tribulations. The church went through some severe tribulation in the time of Nero and many other kings. The church went through severe tribulation. But in all those tribulations, what the Lamb of God is saying is, don't worry, everything is under my control. I am a God who unleashes anything and everything without my plan and without my will. Nothing good is going to happen. And whatever is happening, I am on top of it. And let me tell you, friends, whatever is happening sometime in your life, maybe you're not, you, you know, the, oh, the devil is doing it. Sometimes we blame devil too much. Believe me. And I'm not saying the devil doesn't do it, but let me tell you, unless your master allows it, the devil would have no power over you or any of the situation. But why would the master allow it? The Bible says in Luke chapter 22, it says, Simon, Simon, the devil has asked of you guys. He requested me permission to sift you like a wheat. And I prayed for you. So that you, you would not depart from your faith. But remember this. When you turn back, strengthen your brothers. In other words, no matter what the enemy does, because I'm praying for you, you would be strengthened in your faith. And you would be revived back to your faith. And you would come back to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And not only that, you would strengthen others also. No matter what happens to the church, the church is going to be strengthened at the end in the name of Jesus Christ. Because the Lamb is worthy. The lamb is worthy of praises. And then he says, in the verse, verse 12, he says, lamb is worthy to receive. Lamb is worthy to receive, which means receive power, wisdom, might, glory, honor, everything. Lamb is worthy to receive. We think the lamb should be ready to give. But Bible says the lamb is worthy to receive. This word worthy to receive means that he's going to receive every power on the face of the earth. Let me tell you, God gave him all the power on the face of the earth. That's why Jesus, when he was resurrected, he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me because I remain pure and powerful. Because I lived a pure life, every power has been given unto me. Let me tell you, every power is in the hand of Jesus Christ. And that's why he can unleash any good thing upon your life. My prophecy would not do it unless God does it. My laying on of, your hand, on my hand, of my hands on you would not do it unless God does it. God has to do it. I only preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is Christ alone who heals people. The Bible says that disciples went out, apostles went out preaching the gospel in Luke chapter 16. And God was confirming his word through signs and wonders. It is God alone who does wonders. It is God alone who brings miracles. It is God alone who unleashes his power on the face of the earth because lamb is worthy. He has received every power and not only every power, wealth, wisdom understanding everything god gave him but the question is are you willing to give all the power that you have for the glory of this lamb lamb is worthy to receive the father has given every wisdom the father has given everything but the lamb is worthy to receive would you give him everything Lamb is worthy to receive. Lamb is worthy, friends. And let me tell you one thing. It says that the book was sealed and book was written inside and outside. What does it say? It simply means there is no empty page. It simply means there is no space left. What does it mean to me? Uh, what, how, what should I understand? The book is all about what is going to happen on the face of the earth. The plans of God were written in this book. Everything that is going to happen on the face of the earth was written in this book. And the book was written outside and inside. Which means God knows everything that is going to happen to this world. Let me tell you, America, everything that God has planned ultimately will come to fruition in the land of America. Because God has written everything in it. He has not, written, he has not left any room empty for anyone else to write. In other words, I cannot write my future. My future has already been written by my God. 
I cannot write history. Let me tell you, people say that you can write history. No, it's not me. It's my God. He gives me power to do these things alone. He alone is able to write in this book what is going to happen to the church. Everything is written. What is written? The church will be built at the end. Bible says the church is never empty. You find in the book of Revelation, you find the church is victorious. Nothing was able to defeat the church of Jesus Christ. No matter what kind of situations and circumstances you go through, the lamb has overcome. Lamb is worthy to receive now. Lamb will receive all power, all glory, all authority. Let me tell you this. So many Muslims in, Amma, in my country, around 18% Muslim, the lamb is worthy of the worship of all of, all of those Muslims. In our nation, there are 74% Hindus. They worship idols. Let me tell you, Jesus is worthy of all of those worships. Jesus is worthy of all of those praises. Jesus is worthy to receive. And Bible says the lamp is worthy to receive. The question is how much are you giving to the lamp? How much are you willing to sacrifice yourself to the glory of this lamp? Everything was worshipping this lamb. Everything on the face of the earth was worshipping this lamb because the lamb is worthy. It is, he has written everything on, in this book. The, 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 the father made a plan that this is my plan and the son is unleashing those plans on the face of the earth. Do you know that God has a plan for you also? God has a plan for every individual, every family. God has a plan for you. I did not know that God has a plan for me. I was trying to write my own history, write my own life, write my own, own destiny. I wanted to do it. And you know what? I was a professional cricketer. I was, I was thinking that I would make my name great and I would earn a lot of money because I was playing for my state. But one day Jesus came to me. I was lying down on the bench. Jesus came to me. He touched my forehead and said, Michael, leave everything and follow me. I was a state player. I was representing 170 million people. But one day Jesus said, leave everything and follow me. And I was like, yes, Lord, I'm ready to do it. And let me tell you, I was crazy. I, was, I, I didn't think, you know, people, thought, people said in those days that you have not thought through it. I said, I don't have to because my father has done it for me. My God has done it for me. He knows. He knows his plans from the beginning to the end. He knows what he's going to do. He, he knows what he has planned. He has written it in the book. Everything that is going to happen. And his plans are good, better than me at least. His plans are better than me and better than anybody else. God has a plan and he's going to unleash that plan. And that's why the Bible says the lamb is worthy. He's worthy to receive. And then I committed my life to Jesus Christ. And guess what? When I went back to my daddy, my daddy said, I'll break your bones. Go back to your cricket again. Go back to your sport. I said, daddy, no, please, I have to serve Jesus. He said, no, you don't know what you're talking about. You would beg bread. You would have to be, you know, you, you would be a poor man and I don't want to see you a poor man because my father was a chief accounts officer in those days. And my brother, he's a biochemistry professor of university. So it's like I'm the only one who's leaving everything, like kicking all of those things away and going to serve God. And I would be like, my father said, no, the pastors do not have great life here in India. I said, I'm not in it for a great life. I have great life already in Christ Jesus the Lord. I am blessed. I have everything that I need. I am blessed already in Christ Jesus. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4 and 5 says that we are, he has blessed us in Christ Jesus with all spiritual blessings. Already I am seated with Christ Jesus in the heavenly places already I am more than a conqueror he did not say that you will become a conqueror he said you are more than a conqueror so I am more than a conqueror not that I will become a child of God I am the child of God not that one day I will become something I am and that's why God looks at Abraham and calls him Abraham he knows that pretty soon you would have children and so many children that even, even people would not be able to count. Countless children you would have. So God knows. He has a plan and he alone can unleash it. Nobody else can do it. I praise God for praying mothers. Well, let me tell you, we need to have a praying God and praise God we have a praying God. Jesus sat at the right hand of the Father and is praying for us because of his unleashing things are happening in my life. Because of his releasing, things are happening in your life. Because of his grace and mercy, things will happen in your life. And you need Christ 
more than anybody else. You need Christ. Every day, every hour, you and I need Christ. When I gave up everything, people were really skeptical about my life. I said, I'm going to serve Jesus Christ. Gave up everything and started serving God. Today, let me tell you, friends, by God's grace, I'm the youngest in my family. My father is alive. He's 75. My elder brother, he's still biochemistry professor and head of the department in university. But they see me as head of the family. They see, because you're the man of God, we see you. Every, every decision, even my elder brother would come and ask me, what do you think about this? What do you think? What, how would, how would uh, God see this? How come I get this kind of honor? It's only because the lamb was releasing and unleashing his plan and purposes. It's all good. And in 20, uh, sorry, 26 years, I've been pastoring the church for 26 years. In 26 years, never a time where I had to beg before people. Never a time I had to borrow anything from anybody. God has provided every single thing that I ever needed on the face of the earth. Lamb is worthy, friends. He's powerful. He's gracious. He is able. He can unleash the plans of God, everything. And you have to go to God and say, God, unleash your plan. And one day, one of my daughters was sick. Uh, she, she, she was only... One and a half year old. But she was not moving her lower part. She was only moving her upper part. So she would lie down on the bed and she would not move her lower part for almost 18 months. And we would see that and, and, and we decided to take her to the doctor. I, we thought that she is slower than all the other children. So, so we decided after some time that we would take her to the doctor. We took her to the doctor and got the x-ray done. And in that x-ray... The doctor said, there's one bone missing here, and that's why she's not able to move her lower part. And that, that just could not be created. That, was, that is missing. One bone is, one part is missing, and that's why she's not able to move. And I was like, so what, doctor? What, what, what is the future of my daughter? So, uh, the doctor said, I'm sorry, she can never walk. She would have to be on the bed. But let me tell you, the lamb unleashes the plan of God. Only lamb can release. What doctor said, hey, that's a good word. I'm not standing against you. That may be a fact, but the truth is Jesus is going to do something beyond what your ability can. What you can comprehend, my Jesus is going to do something beyond. We started praying. Every time I would see my daughter laying, lying on the bed, I would lay hands and pray. My, do my wife will go lay hands and, and pray. We kept praying for a lot of time. We kept praying for almost six, seven months. And after a few months, we realized that something is began beginning to happen she started moving her legs and today she is running and completely fine hallelujah this lamb is worthy because his plan when he unleashes it's going to happen and let me tell you his plan is for our good and for our benefit let him have his plan he knows what he is doing the lamb is worthy one day i love this part this lamb the, the, the angel of God came to Mary and said, Mary, you will conceive and give birth to a child. Mary must have said, oh, you know, oh if I would have been there, I would have said, hello, that's not my plan. You should have requested me. Angel did not go to Mary and say, Mary, I went to four girls. All of them were virgins. I talked to them. There is a plan. What do you think? Uh, somebody needs to conceive and give birth to the son of God. So are you in it? And I talked to four, but the four of them, you know, they refused. They said, no, we are already engaged. The other one said, no, I don't want because I have future plans. And the third one said, no, I cannot because I don't want to carry a baby at the age of 18. No, I want to live my life. But no, this is not what happened. What happened was the angel went and said, Mary, you will conceive and give birth to a child. And Mary, and you know what angel said? The grace of God is upon you. Is this grace? Is this grace that I will carry the baby and not be able to tell everybody who's the father? Is this the grace that I would be ridiculed and reproached? Is this the grace that people will talk ill about me behind my back or maybe on my face? Is this grace? Let me tell you, if you carry the Son of God in your belly, if you carry the Son of God in your heart, this is the grace of God upon your life. This is the grace of God upon your life. And, and she said, I am the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be unto me 
There is a plan. God has a plan. And why did, Mary, why did you say yes to the angel? You know what will happen? You will have to run from pillar to post. Yes, I know. You will have to run in the middle of night and you will find no place to give birth to a child. You would have no bed. I know. But why did you say yes? I said yes because the lamb is worthy of every sorrow and every pain, every suffering that I go through as long as the lamb is glorified. The lamb is worthy. Let me tell you, friend, every suffering is okay if it is bringing glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Every suffering is okay because the Lamb is worthy of this glory. Lamb is worthy. Guess what? Who is saying the Lamb is worthy? The angels. Friends, angels were never fallen in sin and angels were never redeemed. Those who fell in sin, they are in chains. There was no plan of redemption for them. And still angels are worshipping God and saying, Lamb is worthy. When would you and I would worship God with everything that we have and say, here is my money, here is my time, here is my energy, here is my everything, here is my family. I had surrendered everything to the glory of the Lamb because the Lamb is worthy. When would we do it? The angels never, never sinned. The some who sinned are in chain, I told you. But they are worshipping God. And not only that, 24 elders in the fourth chapter, they brought their crowns and laid before the Father. What is the crowns? The crowns is achievement, honor, and glory. They said, worthy are you. We are not worthy of this. Let me tell you, friends, every honor that you receive, let Jesus be glorified with that honor because God gave you strength to receive that honor. Any amount of money that you have received, it has come from the Lamb because the Lamb enabled you to do it. Lay it at the feet of Jesus and say, Be thou glorified, O Lamb of God. Lamb is worthy. I might be talking something which is so difficult. I might be talking something which is so biblical yet. Lamb is worthy. One more thing that I would like to say. When it says Lamb is worthy, the book was written inside and outside. No one was able to open it. Then there was a lamb. The truth is he was the lion of Judah and he became the lamb. It is easy for every lamb to try and desire to become lamb, lion. But no lion wants to become lamb. The lion means the hunter. The lion means the strongest one. The lion means having every power, every authority to subdue the enemy. The lamb means slain one the lamb means suffering one the lamb means humble one who wants to become that have you ever tried to be weak did you ever plan to become weak or do you ever plan to become poor you plan to become rich but this lamb is worthy because he was the richest of all and became the poorest of all he was the most powerful of all and he became the weakest of all that he died under the hands of those very people whom he created by his word. This lamb is worthy because he sacrificed his very self for my salvation, for your salvation. And you know, sin is costly. It costs a lot. What does sin cost? It costs your family's joy. It costs you your joy. It costs everything that you have. It costs your peace and it costs heaven. Because of the sin, heaven is taken away from people. Let me tell you, this lamb died for you so that you would be sin-free and you would have the lamb of God and God Almighty back to you, living inside of you forever and ever. One day, I will attain eternity. I am already part of eternity. I have begun my eternal life already. The moment I believed in Jesus Christ, let me tell you, no one can snatch this eternal life from me. Well, you know how it happened? Because the lion became the lamb. Because the lion became the lamb. And I pray this morning, friend, that you would honor this lamb with everything that you have. You would respect this lamb with everything that you have. You would serve this lamb with everything that you have because the lamb is worthy. The lamb is worthy. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Believing that God has a great plan. This lamb is worthy so that you would live with him and for him. For his glory alone. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your son. 
as we gathered in this place, Lord, and we heard from your scriptures, from the word that lamb is worthy because the lamb sacrificed himself. In our place, we should have been dead. Every sin causes death to rule and reign upon our mortal bodies. But you took that sin on yourself and you died in my place so that I would live with you for eternity. Oh, Lamb of God, with my hands lifted up, I pray that in this place, our hearts would be stirred up to live a life glorifying your name. Angels are worshipping you though they do not know what salvation is. They have not experienced the power of God in a way that we have. They have not experienced the love and the salvation as we have. But they are still worshipping you and crying out, Lamb is worthy. So we also with our hands lifted up, we cry out, the Lamb is worthy of every praise. The Lamb is worthy of shouts of glory. Shouts of praise. The Lamb is worthy of any bit of strength we have. The Lamb is worthy. O Lamb of God, strengthen us and use us for your glory. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. We pray this prayer in the mighty and awesome name of Jesus and all God's people say, Amen. Thank you, friends. God bless you.